It's Monday, January 24th, and the time for your Barbados Today morning news update. Even before the newly elected government settles into office, one of the main bodies representing public service vehicle workers is calling for a sit-down to discuss a number of issues affecting the sector. Communications, Information and Marketing Officer for the Alliance Owners of Public Transport, Mark Haynes, tells Barbados Today that his organization has been calling for assistance for a number of years and is hoping that now the mere motley led government has been given a new mandate, it will be open to assisting the PSV sector. We are cognizant that the economy is very precarious and therefore government has a lot on its hands. I'm, I'm cognizant of that in my capacity as communications, information, and marketing officer. But at the same time, I think that this sector, which contributes largely to Barbados and GDP, should be given priority. So I hope this ever Minister of Transport comes to office or holds that portfolio, that he or she and the government, by extension, will be amenable to some of our requests. And I still are calling for government to sit down and meet with us. I still maintain there should be a national conversation. Haynes says he wants issues such as the fuel and excise tax, as well as the question of concessions discussed, as workers have been struggling as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. It is so much going on in the sector. Um, for instance, the question of, like, you know, for concessions and some for the sector, we are under stress in terms of, of the finances, which are down as a consequence of COVID-19. Um, the question of the fuel tax, which has not been touched, that is one of the things we were still put on the table. I believe that the, the excise tax can be looked at as a way of means of, of reducing some of the costs. I think government can look at this going forward, even if it's a short-term measure. But I think overall, we are having a conversation with us. We'll be able to put all, all of our um, all, all of our proposals on the table. I cannot give you all the proposals right now, but I can speak for sure. If your tax really is putting pressure on the sector, and this is the vexing, a vexing issue for the workers in the sector, because basically it really bites into the finances of the daily intake. Former opposition Senator Crystal Driggs is keeping any future plans for elective politics close to her chest, but says Barbados has not heard the last from her when it comes to economic matters. That I will not disclose. <laughs> <laughs> I will not disclose that at this time. The former senator tells Barbados today that at the moment she is living her private life and has no future plans. She described her three and a half years as one of two opposition senators in the upper house as instrumental. The role that I played at the time, I think it was instrumental. The country needed some kind of alternative view, um, even if it was for constructive criticism or if it was to augment, you know, what were the government's plans at the time so that it could be better for the country. And I really saw my role as being purely opposition because I am of the view that Barbados needs to move forward in a way that is progressive for all. And in order to do that, some of the older style of politics, um, we, we have to find a way to, to strike the balance. Where do we, we recognize that we have to have unity and, and then where is it necessary to have criticism? So I think that that was my main position. What what was always back to the country whenever any type of legislation was being passed in the Senate. Um, at the moment, no future plans. Um, I'm, I'm living my private life. Uh, the role that I had was one that I selected, not elected. So I, I, I can only say that I'm going to live my private life as best as possible and be a good citizen. Drake says that the country has not heard the last from her in her capacity as a trained economist, given her interest in sustainable development. She touched on the economic vision for the country. We all know that we are coming to the end of an IMF program, and we've all heard that we are going to have some difficult decisions to make. And I, th I think those difficult decisions were um, facing us even in 2018. I think one of the first things I said when I was speaking to the press when I was named to the opposition centers that we have to make sacrifices. And I think we are in a more... Um, their situation at the moment because 
uh, we have to find our way out of, of the economic hole that COVID has placed us in. Because remember, in 2018, there was no COVID. Um, so we have to find a real comprehensive plan on how we bounce back to where we came from um, and then to move forward. Uh, if not, we, we face stagnant growth uh, for the for the medium term, which would not be good for the country because then it's going to be a drag on things like foreign reserves. Um, it will then beg the question on things like if we go back into a, a new IMF arrangement after this um, extended fund facility, Re-elected Member of Parliament for Christ Church East, Wilfred Abrams, is ready to get down to work. He says uh, there is still a lot to accomplish in his constituency. Abrams was speaking as he celebrated his victory and that of his Barbados Labour Party at the polls with a church service held yesterday. There, there are a lot of things that we didn't get to because health had the first draw on the public funds. There are a lot of social things in the community that we want to do. We want to put lights on all the playing fields. We want to upgrade the facilities. We want to provide more entrepreneurial opportunities. We want to have a vending hub in Christchurch East. We want to convert the, the pavilions to pavilions slash community centers, have free Wi-Fi, have self-improvement classes. There are a lot of things that we could not do, and I think people actually understood that. Right? People understood that, and it's now for us to find the space to actually do those things and make a difference to people. And now for the latest COVID-19 update. Barbados recorded 626 new cases of COVID-19 on Saturday, comprising 281 males and 345 females. They were identified from 2,194 tests conducted by the Best Dos Santos Public Health Laboratory. Of the new cases, 119 individuals were under the age of 18 and 507 were 18 years and older. There were 122 persons in isolation facilities and 7,073 in-home isolation. The death toll has risen to 275 following the passing of a 91-year-old man at the Harrison's Point isolation facility on Saturday. Since the start of the pandemic, the Public Health Laboratory has recorded 39,212 cases of the virus. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses, and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To news from other region, Canadian officials used a virtual summit to pledge an additional $42 million in aid funding to Haiti to improve the country's security situation and other projects. More from CBC News. Haiti's myriad crises, the violence, extreme poverty and lack of a functioning government are deepening, leading Ottawa, Canada's ambassador says, to organize today's summit. A lot of people want to help. We have to make sure that help is... Uh responsive to the needs of the Haitians. Canada announced $42 million in new aid funding in part to strengthen Haiti's struggling national police. It's also calling on Prime Minister Ariel Henry to reach a political agreement with other Haitian leaders. An agreement would help establish stability, said Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie, laying the groundwork for elections. Henri came to power following the July assassination of President Jovenel Moïse. Many Haitians question his legitimacy. It is really an existential crisis. Monique Kleska is a civil society leader seeking to usher in a transitional government. She's critical of Canada for organizing today's summit instead of, she says, letting Haitians take the lead. We want to get out of this mode and get into a mode where social justice 
and where the Haitian voices count. And finally, the U.S. has ordered the relatives of its embassy staff in Ukraine to leave amid rising tension in the region. More from Reuters TV. The United States on Sunday said it was ordering the departure of eligible family members of staff from its embassy in Ukraine and that all U.S. citizens should consider leaving due to the threat of military action from Russia. U.S. and Russian diplomats made no major breakthrough at talks last week, and Moscow has been massing troops on the border with Ukraine. The State Department said it was authorizing the, quote, voluntary departure of U.S. direct hire employees and ordered the departure of eligible family members from Embassy Kyiv due to the continued threat of Russian military action. It added that, quote, U.S. citizens in Ukraine should consider departing now using commercial or other privately available transportation options. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.